Have you found anything? Hi everyone, I'm Maddie and today I've come to these beautiful woodlands on the North Norfolk coast in search of the extremely rare and protected Barbastel bat. In Britain, all bats are protected by law, which means to monitor the likes of a Barbastel bat and see it in the hand, you have to be a licensed carrying expert. This evening I'm joining Jane Harris, a consultant ecologist and bat expert and her team who are kindly letting me observe them place mist nets in these woods in the hope of finding the elusive Barbastel. This evening you're placing mist nets in the woodland. What's the purpose of it tonight? Well, the Norfolk Barbastel study group, we are quite interested to try and find out a bit about relationships between the maternity colonies and whether the females move around okay. and we've been very lucky to team up with somebody at the John Innes Institute which yes. has allowed us to try to extract DNA from droppings Wow! and then uh, look at a particular DNA sequence that will give us that information. So what we're trying to do tonight is um, catch just females because this this genetic marker is inherited only through the female line um, and we're hoping that they'll poo in the bags and then we have the sample to, to take to isolate DNA from. So the dream tonight is to, to get a ca female. Catch, a catch a female, female and for the female to poo. To poo in the bag. <laughs> the nets are all set up and it's approaching sunset which means it's about time the barbastels might be emerging from their roosts. Now bats are nocturnal which means they're sensitive to artificial light so I'm going to be keeping my impact to a minimum and I'm switching to night vision. <laughs> well, this is a little bit cool. What are you? Leaf. Arr. Have you found anything? All that I'm getting on here are the crickets. Oh, never mind. Oh, wait. What is it? This is very exciting for me. It's been a matter of minutes and we've already caught what's probably a common pipistrel. But Jane has removed it from the net, she's put it in a bag and is now off to identify it and take as much information as possible. Okay. okay. So, you know, it's a pipistrel. I know that various features, including that little flap of skin. Pipistrels have those, where the other bats that we're likely to find don't. See, it sticks yeah. out from the... Goodness, it's tiny. The, the membrane goes from the foot all the way to the tail, and some, pi some bats use that tail to catch insects and flick them up to their mouths. These yeah. bones are like ours in upper arm, lower arm or forearm. And then the little hook is like equivalent to our thumb. And then all these other long, fine bones are like our finger bones, but they're obviously elongated. It's a little boy. So I think that's a common pipistrel. Yep. So Adult, male. Very cute. Mm. Go on, little There he goes. Off he goes. <laughs> mm. Right, we can check the nuts again. The mist nets are in place to capture the bats, but you've seen Jane and Sue using bat detectors, and these will give them an idea of the type of species that are in the area. So what does the barbastel sound like? It's fairly distinctive. It's got a very sharp, explosive call. <gasps> Echolocation is when bats emit a high frequency sound which then bounces off objects in the area and then that sound will bounce back to them giving them a sense of where they are and what's around them and it's those high frequency sounds which the bat detectors are picking up on. What have we got? It's gone past. Oh no. We just heard a barber's tail. Good. Yeah, it's gone past. So a bit check the nets in case it went up. Of course. <laughs> just as I turn the camera off, what goes and gets caught in the net but a barbastel. <laughs> right, she's nicely in. There we go. She's very calm. What, me or the bat? <laughs> <laughs> right, there we are. Oh, hello, sweetheart. You are beautiful. 
Mm. Should we go process her? Right, lovely. Here we go. Oh, Pooh. Oh. Um, hey. hey. Is it a female, Jane? Yes. Yes. I think so, yes. We I'll need Lady check. Poo. Fantastic. A bit more? A bit more if we want it. But that'll be enough to get the DNA out of. Little poo sample. Well, the barber cell is fairly distinctive. It's got these ears which are joined at the base above the head and they are very characteristically sort of trape trapezoid in shape. A lot of them have a little, you can see it, this little lobe on the ear, yeah. sometimes called an ear button. Um, the face is quite pug-like. The other thing is the hair has got, it's very dark in colour, but the ends of the hair are light, so it has like a frosted appearance. Very silky, and it's got quite long coat. But really the ears and the the, the head are, are quite distinctive. Wow! They're lovely, they're lovely, aren't they? They are so lovely. Hello, beautiful. No obvious parasites. She looks in quite good condition, doesn't yeah. she? They do groom, so that should help keep parasites off. And she looks quite good. So there we are. Wow. They need to be warm when we let them go. If they're cold, they can't fly. Oh. Oh, Jessie, it gone. Oh. It's landed on him. Whee, and then it went. <gasps> I just la landed on your shirt. <laughs> wow. Well, I could probably should look a bit confused by the light. Yeah. Jane, that's a way to end the night <laughs> with a bat brooch. <laughs> What an incredible way to end the night. A huge thank you to Jane and Sue for letting me observe them this evening and see a barber stell out in the wild. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more just like this. Stay curious and I'll see you soon. Bye.